If I made that money, I'd sit on a beach, I'd drink beer, and I would just watch the sunset. Kind of like a Corona beer commercial. Have you ever thought about that as a career option? Uh, you know, I find that really pretty boring. So <laughs> that would be torture if I had to do that every day. That would really be pretty awful for me. I really need to be preoccupied with something. Uh, and I, if, if I'm just sort of sitting there relaxing, I can only do that for a very short period of time, and then it becomes unbearable. And you want to make money, but are you motivated <clears throat> beyond just profit motive and racking up dollars? And yeah, I, no, I'm a volunteer. I mean, I don't need the money. Um, there's nothing, I, I mean, I, it's not like I'm sitting here saying, I wish I could buy such and such a thing. I could buy it. Um, I get paid minimum wage, actually. I don't even get overtime. You know, I think my, my sort of drive to get it done is somewhat disconnected from hope, enthusiasm, or anything else. I just I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm, motivation. I just give, every, give it everything I've got, irrespective of, of what the circumstances may be. You just, you just keep going and get it done. I think it's, 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 it's very difficult to start companies and, and quite painful. Um, I think that's important to bear in mind. It's much easier to, to get a job somewhere. Much, much easier. Much less stressful. You'll have more time for, for other things. But would you uh, be happier? Uh, no, I wouldn't be. I'd no. be unhappier. But it, it, so it's, it's really like, if you're sort of wired to, to, to do it, um, then, then you should do it, but, but not otherwise. It's not going you know, to optimize your leisure time or anything like that. It's, it's going to be extremely difficult and stressful. So you, you must feel compelled to do it. Um, let me put it this way. If you need inspiring words, don't do it. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard starting a company. I mean, you have to be prepared to work constantly, you know, from when you wake up to when you, when you go to sleep. Um, yeah, you have to be willing to deal with a lot of difficult problems and thorny problems, w willing to deal with an enormous amount of stress. Yeah, you just got to push yourself super, super hard. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it for most people. Yeah. I definitely feel stressed. Yeah, it's like we've been incredibly difficult and painful the last several months. Mm -hmm. Painful? Absolutely, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sleeping on the factory floor, not because I think that's like a fun place to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's terrible. Sleeping on the factory floor doing, why are you doing that? Because I don't have time to go home and shower. I, I don't believe like people should be experiencing hardship while the CEO is like off on vacation. I certainly never expected to to, to, to see the level of success that, that's occurred um, because I, I'm, I'm actually an engineer and uh, but I discovered that in order to do the engineering that I want to do, I have to have my own company, otherwise somebody makes me do something I don't want to do. For me, it's always about, does, this, does what I'm doing matter? If, if we are successful, uh, th does it matter to the world? And uh, so there are easier ways to make money than starting a rocket company or, a, say, a car company. Uh, the odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, um, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. Why even begin? Uh, when something is important enough, you do it even though the odds are not in your favor. How much of your personal fortune have you poured into this? A uh, hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars yes. into something that you did not believe would work at the beginning. Yes. But at the age of 37, he hit rock bottom. His first rockets failed to reach orbit, and an early model Tesla Roadster had quality problems. In 2008, the rocket company is not going well. You no. had three failures. The car company is hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And the American economy has tanked in the worst recession since the Great Depression. Right. Uh, that, was, that was definitely at the worst year of my life. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth. You couldn't have gone out at that point. We, we, it, yes, death would have been, I think, inevitable because we did not have the resources to, to mount a fifth launch. But, 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 yeah, I wish it wasn't so hard. There are people who've been in the rocketry business for decades yeah. who say about you that you don't know what you don't know. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. What keeps you fighting for your vision? What helps you to reach your dream? 
Well, I mean, I, I think I'm kind of constitutionally just geared to, to just keep going. It, 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 certainly, it, there are times when things don't go well, and then that's quite discouraging, for sure. And so then it's, it's difficult to proceed with the same level of enthusiasm. But I do think, like, I do think the things that we're doing are pretty important to the future. If we don't succeed, then we'll be certainly pointed to as a reason why people shouldn't even try for these things. So uh, I think it's important that we do whatever is necessary to keep going. How many things can you buy that you really love, that really give you joy? So rare. So rare. I wish there were more things. That's what we're trying to do, is make things that somebody loves. That a future where we are a space-faring civilization and out there among the stars, this is very exciting. This makes me look forward to the future. This makes me want that future. You know, the things, there need to be things that make you look forward to waking up in the morning. You wake up in the morning, you look forward to the day, forward to the future. The future where we are a space-faring civilization and out there among the stars, I think that's very exciting. The persistence is extremely important. You, you should not give up if there is, if there's, unless you're forced to give up. You know, there's, there's no, no other choice. Now, now that, 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 that principle can be misapplied um, if you happen to be trying to um, penetrate a brick wall with your head. You have to be cautious in, in, in always saying one should always persist and never give up because there actually are times when you should give up because you're, you're doing something in error. But if you're convinced that what you're doing is correct, then you should never give up. And, you know, life, life has to be more than about solving problems. You know, if, if, if all that life is about is solving problems, why bother getting up in the morning? There have to be things that inspire you to, you know, that, that make you proud to be a member of humanity. Well, it's like the Nike slogan, you know, just do it. You know, just showing up is half the battle. <laughs> just, you know, you, you got to try hard to do it and don't be afraid of failure. Um, as Edison said, you know, it's 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Not be afraid to innovate, but also don't delude yourself into thinking something's working when it's not. Um, or you're going to get fixated on a, on a bad solution. Yeah, and I think also just, just um, don't, you know, don't be afraid of new arenas. Uh, you know, you can get a book, you can learn something, and, and experiment with your hands and, you know, just make it happen. Find a way or make a way to, to get something done. I think people should be nicer to each other and give, and give, give more credit to, to others and don't assume that they're mean until you know they're actually mean, you know? Just, it's easy to demonize people. You're usually wrong about it. People are nicer than you think. Give people more credit. I'm probably not the guy that most people would bet on. Um, <laughs> you, Who usually, wins? It's, it's, it's like a, a little kid fighting a bunch of sumo wrestlers. <laughs> usually the sumo wrestlers win. We're, we're a little, little scrappy company. Every now and again, a little scrappy company wins. And I, 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 I think this will be one of those times. Creating a company is almost like having a child. So it's sort of like, how do you say your child should not have food? So one, once you have the company, you have to, to feed it and nurse it, yeah. even if it, it ruins you? Yeah. I think when I was, I don't know, five or six or something, I thought I was insane. It was just strange. Because it was clear that other people did not their mind wasn't exploding with ideas. It was like, hmm, and strange. I don't think, I don't think you'd necessarily want to be me. It's very hard to turn it off. It's like a never ending explosion all the time. You've said that this has been the toughest year for you, the most sort of taxing yeah. year for you. Like, why? 22 hours a day, or like what, how many hours? I was working, yeah, so seven days a week, sleeping in the factory. Uh, I worked everywhere from the, I worked in the, I worked in the paint shop, general assembly, body shop. Do you ever worry about yourself imploding? Like it's just yeah, too yeah. much? Yeah, absolutely. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. And people should not work this hard. I'm not, they should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? It's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain and my heart. It hurts. This is not recommended for anyone. I just did it because if I didn't do it, then Tesla 
good chance Tesla would die. I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, thre threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the, the company was bleeding money like crazy, and, and just, if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We, yeah, within single-digit weeks. But I mean, when we started Tesla, I thought maybe our chance of success was 10%. Well, I mean, I can tell you my original plan um, was, I thought, okay, I had, I had like $180 million from my, percent, my portion of the sale of, of uh, PayPal. And I thought, you know, if I invest half of that uh, in creating these companies, then I still have the other half, which will be fine. Yeah. But of course, that's not how it worked out. We used up all the, 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 the you know, you invested, uh, 100 million, then still needed more money, uh, and then there was the big recession of 2008 and 9, and in the end, I had to invest everything, and um, I had, was borrowing money from friends to pay the rent. You were on the edge of actually. I didn't, I didn't even own a house. I didn't think it would be easy. Um, I th like I said, I thought they would probably fail. Um, but you know, like creating a company is almost like having a child. So it's sort of like, how do you say your child should not have food? So one, once you have the company, you have to feed it and nurse it yeah. and <laughs> take care of it, of it even if it, it ruins you. Yeah. But uh, I suppose there were some tough times in uh, 2008, end of 2008. How did you get through that period of crisis? Yeah. Can we just break for a second? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I think that probably they shouldn't want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay. Um, not as much fun being me as you'd think. There's definitely, it could be worse for sure, <laughs> but it's, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I want to be me. And that's actually been a very difficult journey, I have to say. And my priority right now is to try to add some more uh, management uh, and strength to Tesla in particular, so that um, I can take a vacation. <laughs> you know, in the last 12 years, I've only tried to take a week off twice. The first time I took a, a week off, the Orbital Sciences rocket exploded and Richard Branson's rocket exploded in that same week. Second time I took a week off, my rocket exploded. <laughs> the lesson here is don't take a week off. Well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period. And in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So. Uh, Work hard, like it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's that's the the thing I would I would say. If if you particularly if you're starting a company, Try, trying to build a company and have it succeed is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. I mean, what tends to happen is it's sort of quite exciting for the first several months yeah. of, of starting a company, yeah. and then then reality sets in. Things don't go as well as planned. Yeah. Customers aren't signing up. The technology or the product isn't working as well as you thought. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then that can sometimes be compounded by a recession. Um, and, uh, and it can be very, very painful for several years. When you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be 
dead or completely incapacitated. You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil I'm, Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that, uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, th those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. But there, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world, all the time. Uh, there are lots of problems that need to get solved. There's lots of things that are, yeah, that are miserable and kind of get you down. But that life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. There need, to be, there need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to, be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. So what, what advice do I have for college graduates interested in getting involved in the spheres you've tapped into? Uh, well, uh, certainly I'd invite you to uh, apply for a job at uh, SolarCity or Tesla or SpaceX. If that doesn't work for whatever reason, then I guess apply to jobs at other companies in that arena or try starting a company. The space business is, is quite, it's quite hard to start a company in the space business because it's such a capital intensive business. So it may be better to do something in um, solar power or uh, if you're going to do it in cars, do it in as kind of a component supplier for cars or something like that. If, if you study engineering and, and you figure out how to design new things, then um, it's relatively easy to start a company um, you just need to get a few like-minded people um, with you. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. And then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You know, I think my, my sort of drive to get it done is somewhat disconnected from hope, enthusiasm, or anything else. I just I actually just don't care about hope or enthusiasm or motivation. I just give, every, give it everything I've got irrespective of, of what the circumstances may be. You just, you just keep going and get it done. What is the one thing that has surprised you about your life? Oh, one thing, wow. Well, I certainly, I'm surprised by the whole thing, honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I certainly didn't expect to be, to be uh, for any of these things to happen, honestly. I knew I wanted to be involved in technology. Um, and uh, in fact, the only reason I started a company back in 95, an internet company, was because I couldn't get it. There were only a few internet companies, and I couldn't get a job at any of them. I tried to get a job at, at Netscape um, and uh, sent my resume in and tried hanging out in the lobby, but I was too shy to talk to anyone. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll have to start a company because I can't get a job anywhere. I wouldn't say I'm fearless. In fact, I, I think I, fear, I feel fear quite strongly. Uh, but I, um, if, the, if what we're doing isn't what, you know, what I'm doing is, I think is important enough, then I just uh, override the fear. I think also people tend to of the world, if we can do things that expand the scope and, and, and scale of consciousness, then we're better able to ask the right questions and become more enlightened, and, and that's really the only way forward. What drives you? 
What, what is it that when you wake up in the morning, do you see a problem and you want to solve it? I, I think the, the, the thing that uh, drives me is that uh, I want to be able to think about the future and you know, feel good about that. Uh, that uh, you know, we're doing what we can to uh, have the future be, be as good as possible, to be inspired by what is likely to happen, and to look forward to the next day. That's that's what really what really drives me is is, is trying to figure out uh, how do we how to make sure that things are great and um, and going to be so and um, that's the underlying principle behind uh, Tesla and SpaceX. I think you know particularly for uh, Americans you know like think about America is a nation of explorers. Uh, people came here from other parts of the world, chose to give up the known in favor of the unknown. So I think uh, exploration, like <clears throat> I think the United States is a, is a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. I mean, I thought both Tesla and SpaceX would fail at the beginning. Yeah. You, you saw it? Yeah, you sure. It? Really? Of course. But nevertheless, you put all your money in that. Both. I expected to lose it. I, well, technically, <laughs> what I, I thought was, well, I'll take half the money from PayPal, and if I lose half of it, that's okay. Um, uh, but then, of course, the companies encounter difficulties and then have a choice of like, either the, let the company die um, or put, in, you know, all the money into the companies. And so, I really didn't want the companies to die, so I put all the money in the companies. And then I had to borrow money for friends to pay living expenses. You know, it's just really looking just for evidence of exceptional ability. Um, and if there's a track record of exceptional achievement, then it's likely that that will continue into the future. W well, it really depends on the stakes. If the stakes are high, if, if it's really important, then what should, then I, you know, will overcome the fear and just do it anyway. But essentially, I mean, I just drive over rights fear, but I feel the fear. It's kind of annoying. I wish I didn't, okay. I wish I felt it less. Toward the end of 2008, SpaceX prepared its fourth attempt. We were running on fumes at that point. We had virtually no money. So a fourth failure... A fourth failure would have been absolutely game over. As I said, as I said for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed, just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. So multiple failures along the way. I, I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, not, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones, well, there was no, no point in hiring them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. But Flight 4 was flawless. In Musk's world, it lit the darkness. But, when um, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is, we've done it. And then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. Work hard like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's that's the, the thing I would, I would say. And I mean, if you do simple math, you say like, Okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, you'll get twice as done, as much done in the course of the year as I think it's important that humanity become a multi-planet species. I think most people would agree that a future where we are a space-faring civilization um, is inspiring and exciting um, compared with one where we are forever confined to Earth until some eventual extinction event. You know, that, that's really why I started SpaceX.